Hi, Anyaseyo. My name is Adirunke and I am a 2022 GK scholar. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Okay, one thing people are very confused about is the letter of recommendation. The letter of recommendation should be gotten from the school you graduated from. You can get it from other places, but since it's an academic scholarship, just get it from your school. Usually, it used to be two letters of recommendation, but this year they reduced it to one. But some schools, like I think Korea University, still ask for two letter, letters of recommendation. So it's advised that you get your letter of recommendation from maybe the dean of your faculty, uh, your academic advisor, or somebody that knows you very well. For me, I got my letter of recommendation from my project supervisor. For people that are not Nigerians, your project is your thesis, your undergraduate thesis. So I got it from my project supervisor and I went to her and told her, oh, please, can you give me a, a letter of recommendation? Luckily, my project supervisor is also the dean of my entire faculty, the faculty of science. So obviously, she gave me in the faculty of science recommendation letter, uh, I'm too. Letterhead. She gave me in the letterhead of the Faculty of Science and she wrote things about me. Your letter of recommendation should be personal. So emphasize that to the person that writes your that gives you a letter of recommendation. She should talk about why she thinks you're a good candidate. My letter of recommendation, I think. I I like she told me to bring points like what have we done together so i talked about oh how she supervised me for my project how out of all the students she supervised at the end after the external examination only my project had no corrections so i really wanted her to emphasize that like oh she wrote her research work project thesis thing she wrote it very well uh i talked about i like wrote down the scores i got in the courses she taught me so i was like oh i got a 90 on this course so like please emphasize that <laughs> and like talk about how i and then she should talk about your characters but she also she should also talk about like one weakness because they're supposed to talk about all weakness my weakness obviously was that i'm i'm quite i'm quiet <laughs> I, I know I look like I'm not quiet, but like I'm quiet. I, I, I don't do very well in social situations. So that, that was my weakness. But she should also like balance out your weaknesses with your strengths. Like, oh, she's quiet. But like, she's also a very strong willed person. So although she's quiet, she doesn't let people like force her to change her opinions or something like that. Just like, and then you're not supposed to see your letter of recommendation, but like you should prepare everything for them to make your letter of recommendation. So your letter of recommendation, letterhead paper, if you are applying for embassy track, you are supposed to have four. So how it works is one original letter of recommendation, four photocopies. For me, I just printed the original four times, colored four times. And then she signs on all of them. Her contact information should also be there in case they want to contact her and then she or he signs on all four of them but if you want one colored and photocopies signs on all of them you pack them into an envelope uh do i have i have a cookie i used an envelope about oh my interpack ticket it's not an envelope but like this size so i folded the a4 paper and put it in an envelope this size and then in the envelope Let's say this is the flap of the envelope. She closes it and then she signs diagonally. Let me show an example. Uh, if this is the envelope, if this is the envelope. And this is the flap of the envelope. She signs. Like this. Can you see it? Like this. On the flap so after sealing it she signs on the flap obviously included in the envelope should be the form that you fill form what number form five form five and three photocopies of form five too along with the other letters and sign remember to sign for me i told her to sign here and then stamp she put the faculty stamp on it just like the stamp would just go like this 
like this just to show that i didn't open it and like change anything without a permission so and then you just put this in the envelope when you submit it and then there's the bachelor's degree certificate that you have to submit your transcript for nigerians if you go to a federal school they don't agree to give you your trans your original transcript you're going to be like no it's not for your eyes but the problem is you're supposed to take this transcript and prepare it yourself so if they insist on sending it to the school how are you going to get it my dear you have to get it you have to get that original transcript because on the student copies they usually just write student copy and i don't know if you can apply for gks with a student copy i don't know about that but you probably need your originals you have to get it i got it shall i get it what is up to me Another thing you have to submit is your proof of citizenship and of your parents and family relationship document. So, I don't know about other countries, so I'm just going to talk about it like you're a Nigerian. For me, I submitted my birth certificate. The birth certificate you get in Nigeria from the National Population Commission acts as your proof of citizenship and your proof of relationship with your parents. Because on it, it says, oh, this is her name. She was born in Soso -so City in Nigeria. So that means makes you a citizen of Nigeria. And then it says the name of her parents. Oh, her mother is Adigun Ba Soso. -so -so. Her dad is Adigun Soso. -so -so. so it has established a relationship like, oh, this is who I am. This is my mother. This is my father. Then for your parents' proof of citizenship, you can use their NIN slip, that thing, that NIN slip, their birth certificate, their international passport. I think yeah their international passport then in the case where one of your parents or both of your parents are dead this was what i did my dad is not he's not alive so i submitted his death certi death certificate you don't have to get the death certificate from the national population commission because like i looked it up and they were like oh if he has been dead for more than 12 years you have to submit this you have to submit that and they won't still give you the certificate and my dad has been dead for so long so but we have the death, cert death certificate from the hospital where he died so you have to go to the hospital or usually if somebody dies and gets taken to a hospital or to a mortuary they issue you a certificate so ask around at your family or if nobody has it you can go back to the hospital and ask for it to be issued so the death certificate should have his name for my dad he had like his name this person and then it says born on so 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 day at so 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 place so because it said where he was born and where he was born was in nigeria that death certificate established that oh he was a citizen of nigeria he's just like not alive and then i submitted that with an, an affidavit i swore at a high court in nigeria saying i swear that this person is my father i swear that he was born at so so place and he is a citizen of nigeria and I swear, blah, 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 the end. You just, and then I attached that. And that was my dad's proof of citizenship, his death certificate and the affidavit. And then for my mom, I just submitted a photocopy of her passport. That was it. Now, another thing people are very confused about is the apostille thing. In Nigeria, you cannot apostille your documents. We are not part of the Hague Convention. Hague Convention. There's a convention and we're not part of it. Just know that. So you have to legalize at the Korean embassy. To legalize at the Korean embassy, there are three steps. You take your certificates. That is your degree certificate, your transcript, your birth certificate. If you're using the birth certificates of any of your parents, you have to include that too. For me, I included my dad's death certificate. So these four things. So for your educational certificates, that's your degree certificate and your transcript you take them first to the ministry of education in abuja you cannot take it to any other ministry of education you have to take it to the federal ministry of education the headquarters in abuja and when you go you have to take your original work certificate too if you don't have your original work certificate i think you can take a printout and a scratch card so you take it to the ministry of education in abuja and they authenticate it for you Make sure you make them authenticate photocopies. Photocopies. Make colored copies and authenticate your colored copies along with your originals. 
then you're going to take the originals of these educational documents as well as these your birth certificates and maybe your parents birth certificates or their nin and you're going to take them and colored copies colored copy photocopy and you're going to take them to the ministry of foreign affairs in abuja the headquarters it's opposite the ministry of education no other ministry of foreign affairs don't let anybody scam you ministry of foreign affairs abuja you take it there and they are going to authenticate it too now what you're going to do is you're going to legalize the photocopies of these documents at the embassy i recommend the embassy in lagos you can do it at the embassy in abuja but the embassy in abuja only legalizes original copies and i would not recommend you submit your original certificates for gks because you will never get them back and i don't know about your school but where i graduated from the university of abuja they only issue your original certificate once in your entire lifetime so if you misplace it you cannot get it back so i recommend you send of course you send the colored copies as well as the originals you can take it to yourself by yourself to lagos but you, if you need to send somebody, you can definitely send somebody to take it to the Korean embassy in Lagos, submit it there, and then they legalize it. This process is going to tell the NID in Korea that, oh, these documents are original, they're not fake. Like I said, colored copies. Make colored copies, legalize those colored copies. Once you legalize a colored photocopy of your documents, it becomes the original. That will become your original certificate that you're going to submit so for embassy track you submit one original and three photocopies this one original we're talking about is not your original certificate you will not get it back if you submit your original certificate the original we're talking about is the colored photocopy that you legalize that has become your original and three photocopies of it so that's what you're going to do colored copies of your degree certificate your transcript your birth certificate your parents birth certificate or nin slip or whatever if you're submitting a passport copy for your parents citizenship you don't have to legalize it you can just submit it like that now for the extra extras you can submit you can submit any certificates you have so i submitted i think 30 something or 40 pages of extra certificates i just i just put everything like coursera certificates volunteering certificates i put uh, the title page abstract and certification page yeah i put those three pages of my project that's my thesis and my seminar because you do the seminar just to show i have experience writing uh, a review paper and i have experience writing a thesis and then you just put just put anything you have any extras you have just to show that you're a strong candidate you put it in if you have an english certificate that is not ielts TOEFL, toic you know the usual criminals you put it in the extra certificate you don't label it as a valid english certificate you just put it in the other place and then you just submit all that you can submit a photocopy of your passport page if you have a passport if you don't have a passport yet don't stress but once you submit you should start processing your passport because obviously you're going to need it eventually okay that is it as far as the application procedure and everything so i'm going to be talking about the questions i received i posted some i posted something on instagram and i was like oh give me your questions and some people sent me some questions so i'm going to be reading them and replying them Okay, the first question. This person says, is there a higher acceptance for graduates than undergraduates? Obviously, this depends on the quota. For Nigeria, obviously, there's a higher acceptance. Because for embassy track, there's a quota of six people and then the university track has a quota of 10. But for undergraduates, the embassy track quota is one. And then they share like a quota of, is it nine? I can't remember the number but they share like a very tiny quota with other countries like it's not just us like plenty countries just use a very small amount so obviously if you're from nigeria i don't know about other countries it's easier to get in if you apply for graduate than undergraduate uh, the second question says what if i'm graduating this year and don't have my transcript if you are graduating this year you can apply for a transcript that has all your grades 
for all the years you have studied up until now. But you have to submit your transcript. That was a mistake I made the first time I applied for DKS. My school posted our results online. So I just like printed all the results online. And then took them to my department's academic officer. And told her to stamp it and sign it. Thinking that would make it a transcript. No. A transcript is issued by the registrar of your university. Official document. Your official transcript is what you need. Uh someone asks which schools have high acceptance and frequently asked questions on interview questions oh for schools with high acceptance i don't really know i know i've I, I saw somebody on our group chat last year that made like an analysis of the acceptance rates but i can't remember hmm. i know schools have different quotas for university track i don't know if they have quotas for embassy track but obviously they'll have quotas for like how many students a department wants to take and people usually say oh don't apply to type a universities in seoul you're not getting but honestly i think you can apply you will get in like last year most a lot of people that applied to type a universities for embassy track they got in and it was even the type b universities that were rejecting people left and right because you think they're safe and you're applying for me the school that rejected me was chonnam which is funny because i'm currently studying for my language at chonnam but like type b universities will reject you so if a type a university has what you want definitely you should apply if you want to go to snu just be safe like have a safety school you know just in case okay the next question this person said for my birth certificate there's a slight mistake on it do i submit it with a simple affidavit from the court <sighs> i don't know i honestly i don't know if affidavits work for mistakes on your birth certificate i think you should email nid at the accepting organization in your country so if you're in nigeria you should email kccn and ask them like oh can i submit an affidavit to correct this mistake and if it's not possible you can get your birth certificate reissued if you go to the hospital you were born in or i think if you just go to national population commission they reissue i know mine was lost and my mom had it reissued but then i also know there was this rule that if once you're above 18 they don't reissue it but i don't know you should be able to have it reissued. Go back to the hospital. They will be able to do it for you. Mm, then for a recommendation letter, can one put only surname and first name or it has to include middle name? Just put your entire name. Like, there's no harm. If there's no space, write it under. Just put your entire name. The way it appears in your passport. Don't, don't like, be switching names, adding names. Your full identity is your full name. Just put your full name put everything every letter nothing should be missing and then the next question says for award section should one submit it even if there is misspelling of one's name you can for me i submitted awards that didn't have my complete name it was i i, I think it was fine it didn't cause any problem because like the award the documents for the award they are not compulsory so like when if there's a mistake that's not enough reason for them to be like oh disqualified the awards are just there to show like oh i'm a strong candidate i've done this i've done that this is why you should pick me the documents aren't like do or die so you can definitely submit those certificates and then this says recommendation letter are you supposed to get it from the university you're applying to or where you're applying or where you studied you have to get a recommendation letter from the university you studied do i have to submit original documents don't submit your original documents if you know you will not be able to get your original documents reissued or reissuing, reissuing them will be hard don't submit your original documents colored photocopies colored photocopies okay Someone said, what is GKSG about? I think I already answered that. Uh, where can you apostle in Nigeria? I already answered that. You cannot apostle in Nigeria. 
to authenticate at the Ministry of Education, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and then the Korean Embassy. I recommend the Korean Embassy in Lagos. Uh, interview process at KCCN and oh, was I interviewed by my schools? Oh, okay. For the interview process for KCCN, your interview is going to happen in Abuja. So if you don't, even if you don't live in Abuja, you have to fly in for your interview or travel to Abuja for your interview. Uh, my interview, the interview, I think my interview was like seven minutes. It was so short. For how much I prepared before the interview, it was extremely short. But there are also always questions, obviously. The, they will always ask you to interview yourself. Uh, introduce yourself. <laughs> they will always ask you to introduce yourself. And why Korea? You know, questions like that. But they might also ask you, like, random questions from your application. They will just look at your application and be like, oh, you said so-and-so. Why? So you have to know what you wrote. That's why nobody else can write your essay. They will catch you. Because they will just be like, oh. You said in your essay that you're passionate about so and so. Explain. And then you're just there like, when did I say that? <laughs> so for me, when I was preparing for the interview, I made I'm someone that always makes stuff. I know. It's it's a problem. So I made this. It's like a list of questions. I think I'll post them, but there are more they're like tailored to my major. So if you're applying for something similar, I guess they'll be helpful. Maybe I should post them. I don't know. And one of the questions, obviously, the first one was introduce yourself, why Korea, applications of biotechnology in the real world, uh, Korean government policies on biotechnology. They didn't ask me this, but I used it in one of my replies. I used it in my why Korea reply. They were like, why Korea? And I was like, oh, the Korean government in so, so, so year invested so, so, so amount into the biotechnology research uh industry and korea was the first country to do so and so and i think uh it's a government that, is, that has these policies and is trying to like encourage biotech blah 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 growth in their country i think that's the best place for me to study korea is a leader in biotechnology i was just like hey korea biotechnology like that <laughs> and then one of the questions was how is your work research experience relevant to the course you want so you have to like join it but I didn't get that question. What were my questions? If I am to remember the questions I got, I got the why uh, introduce yourself. And when they said introduce yourself, I prepared my introduction in Korean. So when they said introduce yourself, I said, is it okay if I introduce myself in Korean? And they said, okay. There were two Koreans and two Nigerians at the interview just so you're prepared the nigerians don't speak korean so i did my introduction introduction in korean and then in nigerian it's just like the basics and you say oh chanan i become i don't care what i am with that chanan chan myone blah 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 you know you just introduce yourself kantan again in korean and one of the questions i remember was the one of the koreans asked me why what what do you think about your school's rank and i could not my brain understood what he was asking me in korean about my school's rank but i didn't know which school was it like the school i graduated from or one of the three schools i was applying to so i just talked about the school i graduated from and i was supposed to do it in korean but i didn't even know what the korean word for rank was so i was like Hmm. <laughs> and I just whenever I didn't know the Korean word, I would just Koreanize it. I would just turn it to Konglish. I was just like chilling. I was like, Daijira is home. Aju you myung ha go respect han hake me But like it, don't be stressed i passed the interview although i that was the nonsense i did so <laughs> obviously the interview just like show them that you're willing to learn just show you're willing to try uh, another question they asked me was why these schools so obviously i took like i explained each school i was like oh they have this they have that i there's this professor i really want to work with uh they have this they have that they have this they have that 
there they have this they have that so like just explain read your entire essay and just think about what they might ask i prepared this i'm a bit of a nerd i don't know if you can see it it says interview questions and answers prepared on this day the 19th of march 2022 by adigong adigong or doanyo blah blah the signature interview date interview time interview location so it just has uh this is a table of contents i i know i i i really wanted the scholarship this just says introduce yourself i wrote the answers in english korean and then why korea wrote the answers what are the applications of biotechnology? Wrote the answers. Korean government policies on biotech. Wrote the answers. So like I just made up questions based on my essay, based on like previously asked questions I saw online and just answered all of them. One question: Why should you be chosen? I heard it comes out a lot. They didn't ask me, and just generally answer everything. Obviously, I didn't memorize it. I just read it over and over again, and I saw. I felt like when I answered, I just remembered what I wrote because I studied a lot. And it just what I said wasn't very far away from what I wrote here. So that's my tip for the interview. So that is all for the GKS application process. Oh, I forgot. So about the university interviews for embassy track. After our applications were sent to the university, some schools interviewed, some schools did not. Out of my three schools, uh, only Chungbuk National University did not. I applied to Chonnam National University, Chungbuk National University, and Hannam University. So only Chungbuk did not interview me. The first university to interview me was Hannam University, and it wasn't like a department interview. The Office of International Admissions reached out to me and said, we want to interview you. And the woman just like, it was scheduled. We did it on Zoom. Uh, my Hanam interview is very memorable because it was in Korean and I wasn't expecting it to be in Korean. When it was time for the interview, I opened my Zoom. I was there like, and I said, oh, annyeonghaseyo. And she was like, annyeonghaseyo. And then she said, uh, can you introduce yourself in Korean? Because she said it to me in Korean. I thought I had to answer in Korean. So I was like, oh, 저는 아리마드로 겸이다, blah, blah, blah. And then she asked me something for that. And I was like, oh, I was just like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And I kept waiting for the time when the interview would switch back to English. It never did. I did that entire interview in Korea. And then when I was done with the interview, I went back to the group and I was like, was I the only one that did my interview in Korea? And everybody was like, yeah, you were the only one that did your interview in Korea. Everybody else did it in English. But I think because like I started in Korea, she just went along with it and was like, oh, you know, Korean, let's test you. But I think that also was one reason why I was accepted. I, aside from like the STEM preference thing, because like I could speak Korean. That w I think that was one reason why I was accepted. Then for Chonnam National University, my interview was very confusing. They sent me an email. I think it was evening in Korean time. And they sent me an email that, oh, hi, this is Professor somebody from Chonam National University Department of So So So. We want to interview you and you need to find a supervisor before tomorrow. Tomorrow is the deadline. I was panicking. I was like, huh? And Chonam was my first choice. I really wanted to come to Chonam. So I was like, where do I find a supervisor? And I was emailing supervisors like, hey. Please accept me into your lab. I read your research papers. Like, I was reading research papers. I was supposed to be at work. I was at work just like, okay, viruses. <laughs> and I was reading research papers. I was like, please accept me into your lab. I will work hard. I just knew I wasn't get going to get into Chonnam because the professor situation wasn't looking good. That was my fault. I didn't do enough research. I should have made sure the professors I was interested in that had research related to my field weren't retired. Turns out most of them were retired, so my bad. After my Chonnam interview, I was feeling so down. And Chungbuk National University, I sent them an email like, Oh, hey, bros, a few days before. When will the result be out? And no reply. So I was feeling so bad. I was like, oh, Chungbuk doesn't want to interview me. I won't get in anywhere. And just the next morning while I was preparing to go to work, Chungbuk sends me an email like, We're going to announce your result in a few minutes. And I was like, Huh? The next day, they just sent an email again. Congratulations, you have passed. I was like, 
tomorrow i'm going i i i, I decided on this i was like i don't care if i get him anywhere i'm going to Chumbuk. thank you for saving me i was so happy so that was my interview experience some schools might want to interview you some schools might want to interview you like Chumbuk didn't interview me they just accepted me i'm sad with that Chumbuk. so that is it as far as the gks application process if you want to if you have any other questions anything you're curious about you can always ask me leave a comment down below follow me on instagram i will link my instagram profile down below i travel a lot so if you want to see korea or you just want to hear me rant on my stories follow me or oh, follow me on tiktok too i recently started using tiktok follow me on tiktok <laughs> uh, this channel is mostly not going to be about gks i think i'm just going to do maybe one or two more gks videos if you guys request but it's mostly just going to be about maybe me talking about my stories, uh, videos from when I travel, things I do, day in the life. I'm thinking about doing a dorm tour for my dorm in Chonam National University and things like that. Also, I was thinking about uh, watching dramas and reviewing them with you guys. So tell me if that's something you would be interested in. I hope you have a lovely day and thank you for listening to me ramble for only God knows how many minutes. Annyeong!